Let's press the button to read one label. The printer will print the label with the QR code containing the TID on the surface, and the same TID will be displayed on the printer's UI. Hello everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Oxcript Tutorials. In this episode, we'll be covering how to read RFID information such as TID or the EPC of the tag, and print it on top of the label as well as display it on the printer's UI. Let's get started. So, just like last time, we'll start off with opening our IDE of choice and downloading the relevant dependencies. If you haven't seen the first episode, I'll highly recommend you checking that out first before continuing in this video. The link to the first video is going to be down in the description below. Once we have our IDE open and also the folder set up, as well as our dependencies installed, we can start making the script. It is always a good idea to have a good understanding of what you're building before you actually start coding. So let's quickly go over the UI elements first. Since this script is more so just to demonstrate the ability to read from RFID tags, we'll only be adding a text box to display the value that we've read in from the tag, as well as a button to initiate the printing process. It is quite quick and easy to add those two elements. Let's start with the text box to display the RFID tag information. And before that, it is usually a good idea to check if the name is equal equals to main to make sure the Python file that's being executed right now is the main file that the user actually want to execute. Okay. After that, we can initiate the UI element and we can put a page inside of it to serve as a scaffolding for all the UI elements that we're going to be putting on the page. The first element in this case is going to be a UI text box. We can add it by simply typing PTK UI text box. I'm going to give it a title of tag TID so that the user can clearly see what this is signifies. And also I'm going to leave the initial value as empty so that we can update it later. Now let's add the button to tell the printer to print a single label. It is just going to be a very simple PTK UI button. And I'm going to give it a title of start printing so the user can clearly see what the button is for. Now for buttons, we have to actually pass in a function to it so the printer knows what you want it to do whenever the user actually presses the button. We'll create a function up here called one cycle that will execute once every time the button is pressed. And we'll pass that function right back into the button initialization. And that will be all that we need to do for the UI elements of this project. Pretty easy and straightforward. And although this is a pretty simple program, let's quickly cover the main loop logic before we start writing the code for it. The main loop is very simple. Whenever the button is pressed, read the TID first, pass it to be printed directly on top of the label, display the TID that we read in on the printer screen, and then just wait for the next time that the user press the button again. Super straightforward logic. And given how simple it is, we don't even really need a main while loop. We can just use the built-in looping mechanism of PTK UI in the background. So we just need to finish the code that is necessary for handling the button presses. The first thing to do is to just read the RFID information. We can do so with the function data equals to PTK read RFID. And since we're interested in the TID for this example, I'm going to specify TID in the parameters. Of course, TID is not the only option you have. All the available options will be listed right here, and you can use whichever one that best fits your application. Once that's done, let's check to make sure that the reading operation was successful and actually was able to read in the appropriate information. And if it failed, it will return a negative one. So we can just very simply have a statement here to check to make sure that data does not equal to negative one. And if it doesn't, we can use the data however we would like. In this simple example, we want to be able to write the TID back to the surface of the label, and we can do so with this simple function right here. We also set the label height to be 36.2 millimeters tall, but of course, that's going to be different depending on the label that you're using. Okay. I also truncated the data, which is the TID a little bit, to make sure that it looked a little nicer on display. So now that we have obtained the TID, as well as printed on top of the label, we're still missing the final process in which we update it on the printer's UI. To do so, we will recommend taking advantage of the walrus operator. To use the walrus operator, I'll first create a global variable called TID controller, and I'm going to set it equal to the PTK UI text box initialization using 
the walrus operator. So I'm going to have T and D controller. This way, the variable will be initialized alongside the UI page and can be used anywhere in the script. Okay. I'm going to go back inside the wine cycle function and I'm going to use the global keyword, global TID controller. And then at the very bottom, I'm going to do TID controller update data. And there we go. That's all that we need to do. Let's see it in action. If you haven't seen the first video on how to debug the program using the Postat Companion app, I would certainly recommend checking out the video first for how to debug, as well as how to install new programs onto the printer. You can find the link to the video as well as the link to the source code in the video description below. With the log script loaded up on the printer, we can simply go into settings, log script, and select the file we just uploaded. And as you can see, the UI is exactly as we programmed. Let's press the button to read one label. The printer will print the label with a QR code containing the TID on the surface, and the same TID will be displayed on the printer's UI. Of course, displaying the TID on the printer's screen is not necessarily the most useful end result with that information. It would certainly be a great idea to take that information and log it into a database or some kind of asset tracking software to help us manage the information. I'll be showing you a very simple example using Google Sheets in the next episode, where we will take the information we just got here and log it into a Google Sheet document so that we can have a better idea of exactly what data is printed to what RFID tag in real time. For now, thank you all for watching. Please like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.